Yeah, hi guys, how are you going? Oh, thank you. Uh, so if you've got medical qualifications or you uh, just got statistical qualifications? So statistical and psych psychology. Psychology, okay, thank you. Um, so, and I just want to confirm that the ABS hasn't run the deaths compared it to any vaccination status whatsoever. So no. you can't say definitive, definitively whether or not people died from the vaccine or not based on, on using statistics as opposed to uh, Senator Rannick, so um, the, the ABS's role is to bring deep expertise to the coding of information that's supplied on the death registration certific certificates. Sure. Um, so we have um, yeah, very deep expertise in doing that work. We apply a methodological systematic approach that is objective. Um, and then we compile the statistics, quality assure them, and publish them in detail on the ABS website. Okay. We Thank don't you. have, to your question about the vaccine status, yep. as Ms Moran's explained, um, the vaccine status is not available on the death certificate. However, the ABS also um, has um, a, a the ability to link the Australian Immunisation Register, which has vaccine status with death records. Um, and that information has not been analysed by the ABS team, um, which was also part of your question, but is available for other researchers. Is, is that and, something you'd consider doing, linking vaccination um, status to our death? Our colleagues um, at AHW who are appearing uh, directly okay, after I'll, I'll us. I'll take that up with them. OK, yeah. that's fine. Um, so then, have you got access to the primers that we used in the PCR test to determine whether or not someone had COVID versus another form of a virus? No, Senator. So you're not. So you're not sure of the accuracy when someone tested positive to COVID, how accurate that test was. I'll just um, hand to Ms Moran to make sure that we're providing the most accurate information. So we are asking doctors, though, Senator, for their best medical opinion and for forensic pathologists for their best medical opinion. So we would expect that to be listed on the death certificate. So I guess then, because normally if you, you want to find out if you've got a disease, you get a pathology test, you get a serology test where you go and get a blood test. And in COVID, we actually used a PCR test uh, that had a very high cycle threshold of 40. And Anthony Fauci himself has said above 32, 33, the PCR test is very unreliable. And it's been found in a court in Europe that above 35, it's down to 3 per cent reliability. So I guess I note here that you said you're interested in the quality and accuracy over time. Are you prepared to go? And I've asked the TGA and estimates for this PCR test for the primer so that I know the sequence and the length of the sequence used to determine whether or not someone had COVID or not. So is that something you're interested in looking at in order to get better quality control over whether or not someone had COVID versus other viruses? So that would be out of the scope for the death certificate data. Okay. So in regards to the doctor's certificate, when they ruled that COVID was the cause of death, had those doctors gone and performed pathology tests on those patients to determine whether or not there were the presence of the spike protein from the virus or there was a spike protein from the vaccine? noting that the, the vaccine has a different spike protein to the actual virus. So if you've, I'm not sure if any of you have read the actual TGA non-clinical report on the vaccine, but it was codon optimised, so the mRNA in the vaccine was codon optimised to increase the presence, to output the expression of the actual spike protein. It also had uh, replaced the normal natural pseudo-nucleotide, um, um, uridine, with a, a, a synthetic nucleotide called methyl pseudouridine. Now, that was designed to make the mRNA last longer, okay, which meant that it would produce more spike. As well as that, it also had an extension of poly-A um, tail at the end to make it last longer. So, Senator Rennie, I'm just conscious of time and you only have about okay, a minute left, okay. so just one if you okay, so want I'll, to ask I'll keep a I've got one, two, uh, this question. So, so there were no pathology tests performed by doctors to determine which spike protein was in the body at the time of death? So that, that happens before we receive the death certificate data, so we're not aware of the test. Okay, so that's uh, okay. So I'll leave it at that. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.